Hey, good afternoon everyone. This is Shannon Scott with Grave Talks coming to you from the underside of Highway 24 running through the middle of Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I'm standing here between two halves of a cemetery called Cross Creek. And kudos to the uh, Fayetteville Parks and Recreation for adding these, uh, uh, this wonderful walkway that unites the two cemeteries. The two halves, the oldest and then the older, uh, or also an old one, I guess, <laughs> but also modern, um, cemetery called Cross Creek. And this is Cross Creek running under the bridge. It's about a mile long, running around Fayetteville, eventually intersecting that away with the Cape Fear River, which, uh, of course, has a couple famous movies tied to it, right? Uh, one of them shot in Savannah, especially the original, I might add. But um, I love Cross Creek. Um, it's the oldest cemetery in Fayetteville, 1785. And before it sounded so busy above me, this was just a rural cemetery, although a stone's throw from the original historic city of Fayetteville. And I think if I read correctly, it, it really has 1,100 or so original internments and then um, a certain body of Confederate soldiers, so I'm not sure the total body count across the uh, the many acres, but let's take a quick look again at Cross Creek. Beautiful area here, but I just love how the bridge back there has some cathedral window design, which is kind of typical to those WPA bridges of the early 20th century. I think it's just kind of nice that there's almost a church implication there between the two halves of the cemetery cross creek but i just love how you kind of are almost climbing up into paradise here a, a sloping ramp upward so there's a whole like symbolic ascension vibe to it and when i was here a couple months ago the pillar stone pillar straight ahead of us had been vandalized um the trash can here actually burn up so it's kind of nice that the plaque is back, I think. But Harry Shaw, who worked in a nearby church office, he was born near the Cool Spring Tavern in downtown Fayetteville, 1926. I presume he is gone. Uh, there's no death date here. Maybe he's still around. Sorry, Harry, if you're still alive, I apologize. <laughs> you're getting up there. But um, this is where he used to play as a kid. I think that's kind of fitting because I meet people all the time that tell me those stories of playing and cemeteries as children, um, particularly Colonial Park Cemetery in downtown Savannah. So yeah, this, these, these have always been kind of parks and serve many uh, obvious sorrows, but also many joys and many kinds of happiness. And isn't that sort of the, maybe the purpose of cemeteries, you know, to remember, but to also smile upon and fill the place with you know, just happiness, you know, even if that's just a, a mental feeling, a mental reflection, it doesn't have to be out loud necessarily, but I think I like the idea of kids playing around cemeteries as long as, you know, they're respectful or what have you. Um, I'm a kid, I'm a big kid at heart playing in cemeteries all the time. I've turned that into a lifestyle as you can tell. But speaking of being a kid or a kid, I actually fell in love at a young age with the story of Marquis de Lafayette, who has some crazy long name in French that I would bastardize if I tried to pronounce it like Honoré Gilbert du Motier, Marquis de Lafayette and some other wordage. <laughs> but, you know, when I was growing up in the suburbs, Illinois, playing my Atari in a basement, although, you know, working hard in contrast, you know, painting barns and walking beans and detasseling corn. You know, I felt a little softish around the edges when I learned that a guy named Lafayette had been made a general in Washington's army at 20 years of age. I thought, man, I got some serious catching up to do. But it lit a fire in me. That's my point. It lit a fire in me as a human being that I've always just kept refilling with oil or finding a reason. It's just never dimmed too much. It's kind of a love for America, the American dream. 
love for the people that fought for it. And, you know, I always keep in touch with the people that did. I mean, look, I'm surrounded by them, right? Thank you, forebearers. But Lafayette, you know, to move to Savannah, Georgia in my life and find that he had a connection there was awesome. Uh, you know, he gave, they say, a, a four-hour speech in French from the balcony of the Owens Thomas house. But he took a five-year tour of the United States, the country he had helped build and found uh, as a foreigner. And although he is buried in Paris, it's almost like, you know, they should have buried some part of him at Mount Vernon, which maybe they did, who knows. That wasn't uncommon for those guys. But Lafayette, he... Um, would send, he would write the famous article, The Rights of Man. He would send the key of Bastille Prison to Mount Vernon in Washington, would have received that, which I saw there under glass as a kid. Which, you know, at the time I didn't understand much about that. And, you know, Bastille is kind of a more of a symbolic thing than a literal thing, but, you know, it, the meaning is not lost. But when he was touring, uh, America. He stopped in a city named for him, and much like the guys Pulaski and Nathaniel Green, who'd had all these township squares and streets named for them, they still do. Lafayette had a few to visit, one of which was Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I kind of wonder if he walked around this cemetery. I mean, some of the officers he had known were buried here, so I have to think he came here to pay respect and lay some wreaths but you know Fayetteville 1785 was not new but he arrived here under a, a rainstorm and there was a um, a parade serenading him or he was led into town uh, they held a ball for him here in Fayetteville but unbeknown to him at the time was his bodyguard Isham Blake senior in the crowd. Maybe he felt him, you know, psychically, what have you. But Isham Blake belongs to Cross Creek Cemetery, senior. And as does his wife, uh, Macy, I believe. There are also, in my mind, four stillborn children here, if I have that correct. And I think three of them went on to live kind of regular lives. One buried in Florida, another in North Carolina. Not sure where the long lived daughter may be, but. Nonetheless, Isham Blake had enlisted, some say, in the Continental Army in Virginia, 1781. I think there must be some earlier timeline to that because even though his death date, or sorry, birth date, <laughs> is in debate. Some listed as 1866, other records showed 1855, which to me fits the mold of him traveling from his home state of Virginia down to uh, North Carolina. But at one point, George Washington enlisted the musician, member of the Continental Army. I'm wondering if there was more to it than that, like a Freemason connection. You know, there had to have been something more to that, but maybe Washington was just impressed by his character. He was recommended, but he escorted Lafayette, I thought, to Valley Forge, or maybe from Valley Forge, um, to the area of Brandywine and Yorktown. I could not find those facts on the fly as I rolled into town here, but I, you know, feel free to add your own comments. Thank you. Or hopefully I'll know something more by the time this video posts. But anyway, uh, Ish and Blake and Lafayette got to know each other fairly well. And Isham himself fought at the uh, Battle of Brandywine and Yorktown and personally saw Cornwallis <laughs> surrender to Washington at Yorktown. Holy moly, like King George II. He was passing out back at home. But, you know, some of the powder kegs that helped Washington defeat uh, Cornwallis came out of Savannah through the Liberty Boys. So I think that's kind of cool. But Ish and Blake and some of the family here uh, around this crepe myrtle, which is uh, blooming beautifully, I might add. Uh, the crepe myrtle, symbolic of so many wonderful things in antiquity. But, ooh, let's see if we can get a close up church steeple in the distance, which is really the main drag in Fayetteville, serenading us a little bit. How lovely. Can't beat that timing-wise. But we have his wife, Isham's wife here, Mary uh, Macy, 
who I thought was from North Carolina, but don't don't uh, quote me. I think this is Isham Blake's headstone there. It's it's illegible, covered in mold. It's w quite weathered, but the um, Lafayette kind of organization locally in Fayetteville placed this plaque so people walking by on the sidewalk could read it uh, that talks about Isham and celebrating the 250th anniversary of his birth. Uh, we see the Sons of the American Revolution uh, emblem there, which is quite lovely. So yeah, this is the home of uh, Isham Blake, but the thing about the visit with Lafayette, he was unaware of Isham being here, and I found two accounts, but they all both describe the two men just teary-eyed, rushing to each other, embracing. They had not seen each other in over four decades. And one account says Isham put in a request to see him. Eh, maybe. I think the other sounds a little more down-to-earth Lafayette, down-to-earth Isham Blake, just down-to-earth American. Uh, at the ball where he was attending Isham, and Lafayette, obviously the, the um, guest of honor, he may have been playing music, I don't know. I mean, Isham was a musician. Was he playing? I'm not sure. Some say he was a part of the parade that brought Lafayette into town, you know, musically. But nonetheless, uh, the account that I enjoy is that the two men saw each other through the crowd. You know, maybe, you know, they were glad for the festivity, but they were just thinking about what a wonderful human gathering, and they made eye contact. And it's just like, you know, it all came rushing back. You know, the, the flood of memories of traveling day and night together and the esteem that Isham felt, uh, the brotherhood that Lafayette, uh, Lafayette felt to Isham. And the two men, men ran across the uh, ballroom and embraced tearily and I'm sure had many conversations past that. But what a lovely, I think, tale or reunion tale of two friends. And uh, Lafayette one of America's greatest heroes, I believe, one of uh, Liberty's greatest heroes, one of humani humanity's greatest heroes and authors. And he lived a long time. And the two men died about three years apart. I think Lafayette in 1836, Isham here in 1833. And one wonders if, while they uh, lay in separate countries, passing on, that th thoughts of one another flowed to the other, or how... Of course, uh, Lafayette in France may have received news, if at all, of Isham's passing. And did he meditate on that there in France and, and write about that? I don't know. But anyway, Isham Blake Sr., we salute you, sir. You are forever known as Lafayette's bodyguard. I can only hope to be so cool. God bless you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for supporting the channel. More to come from Cross Creek and Fayetteville.